remind you of these definitions because they're going to come up with this idea of functions. And then let's look at this function. What is a function? A function is a relation for which every input maps to exactly one output. And then you can take note of this. This is maybe the thing that confuses my students the most. Two different inputs are allowed to map to the same one output, but one input is not allowed to map to two different outputs. So I'm going to show you how this works. In a graph, we use something called the vertical line test to test for functionality. And what that means is if a relation, a relationship that is shown, is a function, I will not be able to draw a vertical line. So vertical line that goes through two or more points in that relation. All right, so this is how it looks, okay? This blue guy right here. If I draw lines straight up and down, anywhere along the blue guy, they only ever cross at one point. Okay, so that means this blue dashed relation is a function. Yes. That heart, it's easy for me to find a spot where I can draw a vertical line crosses two points. So this heart is not a function, okay? It is a relation, but it's not a function. This guy right here, this wave, is almost functional, but there's this one spot, right? This one little section right here where I can draw a vertical line and go through more than one point. So even though for most of it, I can draw a line and it only goes through one point. There is this one spot where I draw a line and it goes vertical line and it goes through two points. So this, this is not a function. All right. What that means in, in the context of the definition of function, remember definition of function said for every input, there's exactly one output. Okay. And remember what are our inputs? Our inputs are our X values. So when X equals two, for the heart, what does y equal? y equals 4 or it equals 9, right? It equals 4 or 9. So that's, that's where it becomes a problem, right? If I can give you an x value and you don't know which y value to choose, then we don't have a functional situation. Let's look at a couple other contexts. All the same context that we looked at last time. Uh, points, all right, points on a graph. You tell me which ones are functions, which ones aren't. We got the white set of points, green set of points, purple set of points. Which ones are, which ones aren't functional? Purple, obviously not functional. All right, vertical line goes through three points. It's not a function. Green obviously is functional. Every time I draw a vertical line, it only goes through one point. White. Here's a problem. Right? It's not functional because at x equals 1, there's two different y values. So that's how the vertical line test works. That's usually what we use in a coordinate plane when we're trying to figure out if a graphed thing is functional. In the area of equations, classic example of function versus not function. Y equals x squared is a function. X equals y squared is not. Basically, at our level, Algebra 1 level, what you have to do is try a couple different things. Try a negative number, try a very small number, try a very big number. See if there's a way for you to come out with 
two different answers given one x. All right, so if I if I say five squared, there's only one possible answer. Five squared is twenty-five. If I say choose x negative eight squared, there's only one possible answer. Sixty-four. All right, so every x that I choose, there's only one possible outcome. That's a function. All right, for one input, there's only one output. Here, let's say I say x is 49. What is y? All right, what number times itself equals 49? Now, the first number that you think of is 7. 7 times 7 is 49. So when x is 49, y is 7. But if I told you that that's not the only thing that x could be, I don't think it would take you too much longer to remember that negative 7 times negative 7 also gives me positive 49. So this also is an answer that satisfies that equation. All right, and because one x value can go to two different y values, it's not functional. All right, but we don't deal with a lot of powers in algebra one. Mostly we're dealing with linear equations. Linear equation is always going to be functional. When I graph this, it's going to be a straight line. Uh, the, only, the only line... The only line that would not be functional is if you say x equals 6. Something like that. That is a straight up and down line at x equals 6. All right, the y can be equal anything when x is 6, so that would be not functional. Inequalities, on the other hand, are very dysfunctional. All right, if I pick x is 7, 3 times 7 minus 14 equals 21 minus 14 equals 7. 7 is less than y. There are a ton of answers that I can put in for y. I can say y when x is 7, y is 8. I can say when x is 7, y is 23. I can say when x is 7, y is 50. Okay? All these different answers that would make that true means that this is not a functional relation. Three, here's three other examples of dysfunction in three of our other contexts. Easy to tell in a mapping. If you have this situation going on, two arrows leaving from the same input, you're dysfunctional. All right, when I input negative five, sometimes it equals one, sometimes it equals negative two. That's not a functional situation. In a table, what you're going to be looking for is if there's ever an x value that appears twice, does that x value map to two different things? And if it does, then we're not functional. In a set of ordered pairs, already looked a little bit at this, you'll be looking for the same kind of thing. I don't know why uh, I keep choosing negative 3 as my dysfunctional point, but same x maps to two different y's, it's not a function. Looking at the same context, functional relationships would look like this. Okay? Each input has only one arrow leaving from it. Right? It's okay that both of these inputs lead to the same output. And that's what I was talking about before. It's fine. Every time I put in a 24, I get a negative 11. You can't see the negative, so that's behind the circle. So it looks like positive to you. But every time I put in 24, I get this negative 11. All right, that's fine. That's functional. Every time I put in negative 3, I get 61. Every time I put in 8, I get negative 11. That's a functional situation. Okay? No repeats of x in your table. Each x is going to one output, that's functional. Right? In your ordered pairs, 
if x gets repeated, I have a 9 there and 9 here, it's still okay, it's still a function if the y value is not changing. When x is 9, we're always going to y is 8. And again, it's okay for two different x's to go to the same y. That's okay. You just can't have one x that goes to two different y's. Last, last uh, situation, Phineas has 12 snakes. We looked at this last lesson, lesson 37. Okay, I just wanted to display, this is a new problem, the difference between dysfunctional and functional. And maybe our word context will give you more of a picture of what we mean mathematically when we're saying a function or a relation that's not a function. So the, the main difference is Marilyn's situation is much more well-defined. If you have an input for Marilyn's situation, you know your output, okay? For Phineas' situation, it's ambiguous. One input could have more than one possible output, right? You don't, you need more information in Phineas' case to, to figure out what's going on. So Marilyn sells talismans for $36 each, right? That's how much she sells them for. How much will she make selling five talismans? There's only one answer to that. She's gonna make 36 times five, 180, $180. Phineas, on the other hand, Phineas has 12 snakes to sell. Nobody's willing to pay more than $200 for a snake. How much money will he make? Okay. It doesn't, he doesn't specify a price, a specific price. We just know it's going to be less than 200. So he might be selling one snake for 150 and he might take for $75 and he might be selling another snake for $20. We don't know. We don't know what those actual prices are. So we can't actually answer this question completely. All right. And that's why it's a dysfunctional situation. It's not a uh, each input does not have a clearly defined output. Okay, so that's the definition of function. That's how it works in the different contexts. 